I had sort of developed a reputation for being the nicest person on the set. Gina Davis was celebrated for her iconic feminist movies and Oscar-winning performance in the 90s, but these days, she's linked only to a disappointing TV comeback. Following Thelma and Louise, Davis has had her time in the sun with other projects, but over the last decade, she's been nowhere to be seen. How does a talented actress of Davis's caliber disappear from Hollywood? Will we ever see her on the screen again? Keep watching to find out what's going on with Gina Davis. But when did it all start? Let's take a closer look at Gina Davis's journey to understand what really happened. Gina Davis was born on January 21, 1956, in Wareham, Massachusetts. Her mother, Lucille, was a teacher's assistant, and her father, William F. Davis, was a civil engineer and church deacon. Both hailed from small towns in Vermont. From an early age, Davis developed a keen interest in music. She learned to play the piano and flute, and her proficiency with the organ was such that she served as the organist at her congregational church in Wareham during her teenage years. In addition to her musical talents, Davis was also active in school activities, becoming a cheerleader and ultimately serving as cheer captain in her senior year of high school. She attended Wareham High School and spent a year as an exchange student in Sandviken, Sweden, where she became fluent in Swedish. Davis had aspirations of studying acting at Boston University, but she missed the required audition while she was in Sweden. As a result, she began her college education at New England College before transferring to Boston University. Unfortunately, she did not complete her degree, having received an incomplete in at least one class and an F in a movement class. After leaving university, Davis's first job was as a model for window mannequins at Ann Taylor. She later signed with New York's Zoli Modeling Agency, marking the beginning of her career in the public eye. Rise to Fame Gina Davis's career took off while she was working as a model. Her big break came when director Sidney Pollack cast her in the film Tootsie, 1982, as a soap opera actress. Davis described her character as someone who's going to be in their underwear a lot of the time. Tootsie became the second most profitable film of 1982, receiving 10 Academy Award nominations and earning its status as a classic. Following Tootsie, Davis secured a regular role as Wendy Killian in the television series Buffalo Bill, which aired from June 1983 to March 1984. Despite the show's 11 Emmy Award nominations, lukewarm ratings led to its cancellation after two seasons. During this time, Davis also guest-starred in popular TV shows such as Knight Rider, Riptide, Family Ties, and Remington Steel. She later landed a series of her own, Sarah, which lasted for 13 episodes. In addition to her television work, Davis auditioned for the lead role of Sarah Connor in the 1984 sci-fi action film The Terminator, a part that ultimately went to Linda Hamilton. Davis continued to build her film career with a role in the action comedy Fletch, 1985, where she played a colleague of Chevy Chase's character, a Los Angeles Times undercover reporter investigating drug trafficking on L.A.'s beaches. Davis then starred in the horror comedy Transylvania 65000 as a nymphomaniac vampire acting alongside her future husband, Jeff Goldblum. The duo teamed up again for the sci-fi thriller The Fly, 1986, loosely based on George Langeland's short story. Davis's portrayal of a science journalist and the love interest of an eccentric scientist contributed to the film's commercial success and helped establish her as a notable actor. In 1987, Davis appeared with Goldblum once more in the offbeat comedy Earth Girls Are Easy. This series of roles throughout the 1980s showcased Davis's versatility and set the stage for her continued success in Hollywood recognition and critical acclaim. Director Tim Burton cast Gina Davis in the film Beetlejuice, 1988, where she played one half of a recently deceased young couple who become ghosts, haunting their former house. 
The film, which also starred Alec Baldwin, Michael Keaton, and Winona Ryder, was made on a $15 million budget and grossed $73.7 million. Davis's performance, along with the overall film, received mostly positive reviews. Following Beetlejuice, Davis took on the role of an animal hospital employee and dog trainer with a sickly son in the drama The Accidental Tourist acting opposite William Hurt and Kathleen Turner. The film was both a critical and commercial success. Renowned critic Roger Ebert gave the film four out of four stars, praising Davis for bringing an unforced wackiness to her role. Her performance earned her the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Davis's next major role came in Ridley Scott's Thelma and Louise, 1991, where she starred alongside Susan Sarandon as friends who embark on a road trip with unforeseen consequences. The film was both a critical and commercial success, becoming a landmark feminist film and influencing other films and artistic works. Davis received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress for her role, and the film also featured Brad Pitt in his breakout role as a drifter. In his 2020 Oscar acceptance speech for Best Supporting Actor, Pitt thanked director Ridley Scott and Davis for giving me my first shot. In 1992, Davis starred with Madonna and Tom Hanks in A League of Their Own, playing a baseball player on an all-women's team. The film reached number one at the box office and became the 10th highest grossing film of the year in North America. Davis's performance earned her a Best Actress Golden Globe Award nomination. But what happened to this cultural treasure since? Davis has had her time in the sun with other projects, but over the last decade, she's been nowhere to be seen. What's kept Davis out of the spotlight for so long? Here's a look at what happened and the exciting projects that may finally bring her back. Her TV comeback failed. Gina Davis made a significant return to television in 2005 with her lead role in the ABC political drama Commander-in-Chief, where she portrayed America's first female president. The show premiered with strong ratings and earned Davis numerous awards and nominations, including a Golden Globe. However, its success was short-lived. Due to declining viewership, ABC canceled the series after just one season. In a 2016 interview with Vulture, Davis expressed her deep disappointment over the cancellation. I was devastated, she admitted. I still haven't gotten over it. I really wanted it to work. It was on Tuesday nights opposite House, which wasn't ideal. But we were the best new show that fall. Then in January, we were opposite American Idol. They said... The ratings are going to suffer, so we should take you off the air for the entire run of Idol and bring it back in May. I put a lot of time and effort into getting it on another network, too. But it didn't work. This wasn't Davis's first setback on television. Her previous show, The Gina Davis Show, was also canceled by ABC after just one season. Despite these challenges, Davis's determination and talent have continued to shine throughout her career. Her career has stalled in the past. Gina Davis's attempts to revive her career on television might have been spurred by a string of box office failures during the mid to late 90s. After enjoying tremendous success with hits like The Accidental Tourist, Thelma and Louise, 1991, and A League of Their Own, 1992, her career took an unexpected downturn following two consecutive films made with her then-husband, director Rennie Harlan. The first of these films was Cutthroat Island, 1995, a notorious flop that remains one of Hollywood's most unsuccessful movies. It bombed so spectacularly at the box office that it significantly tarnished Davis's previously stellar reputation. Following this, she starred in another action thriller directed by Harlan, The Long Kiss Goodnight, 1996. Although this film received mixed to positive reviews, it failed to recover even half of its budget domestically. This professional setback seemed to coincide with personal turmoil. Davis divorced Harlan in 1998 and took an unusually long two-year hiatus to reassess her career. This period of reflection perhaps influenced her decision to transition to television, 
where she sought to rebuild her career and find new opportunities. She became more selective. A 1998 profile in the New York Times depicted Gina Davis as open to almost any movie role. But in a 2016 interview with Vulture, she revealed that her approach changed significantly once she reached her 40s. Film roles really did start to dry up when I got into my 40s. If you look at IMDb, up until that age, I made roughly one film a year. In my entire 40s, I made one movie, Stuart Little, she explained. I was getting offers, but nothing meaty or interesting like in my 30s. I'd been completely ruined and spoiled. I mean, I got to play a pirate captain in Cutthroat Island. I got to do every type of role, even if the movie failed. Despite the film's failure, Davis's enthusiasm for diverse roles remained evident. Did parenthood get in the way? After what the New York Times described as a difficult divorce from Rennie Harlan, Gina Davis's personal life took a positive turn. In 2001, she married neurosurgeon Reza Jarahi, and by the age of 48, she had three children, including twin boys. For most Hollywood actors, having three children so quickly might justify taking some well-deserved time off. However, Davis clarified in her interview with Vulture that her reduced film roles were not due to her becoming a parent. One thing I always want to clear up is the notion that I took time off to have a baby, she said. A lot of people leapt to that conclusion because becoming a parent happened to coincide with film roles tapering off. When I made Commander-in-Chief, I had three children under three years old. If I was really going to take time off from working, I think it would have been then. She took up archery. In 1999, Gina Davis surprised everyone by competing for a spot on the U.S. archery team for the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Having taken up the sport only two years prior, Davis didn't make the team but finished 24th in the semifinals of the U.S. Olympic trials. Reflecting on the experience, she told the New York Times, I was ill-prepared for this onslaught. It was like being at a premiere, which I'm used to. I mean, that doesn't make me nervous anymore. But to do a sport with this kind of attention was kind of unsettling. And also, one wants to do well at the Olympic trials, so there was a level of stress. Despite not making the team, Davis regards her training as a positive experience. It was the most out-of-body experience I've ever had, she said during a 2016 Television Critics Association panel discussion. It was fabulous. I will never forget about it. Gina Davis runs her own research institute. Since 2004, Gina Davis has expanded her focus beyond acting to champion a significant cause. She currently heads the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, dedicated to increasing opportunities for women in Hollywood. The reason I started this whole research institute is because I found out that people absolutely had no idea that kids' media was so gender-biased. And before I watched it with my daughter, I was sure it was fine, Davis explained to Vogue. I was appalled to learn the truth, and I decided I was going to bring it up in my daily life in Hollywood. Watching children's shows with her daughter, Davis observed a stark disparity between male and female characters. When she raised this issue in meetings, she found widespread ignorance about the problem's scale. Determined to address it, Davis launched a comprehensive research initiative through her institute, conducting the largest ever study on gender portrayals in TV and film. The results confirmed her concerns women were significantly underrepresented. Since then, Davis has been steadfast in her efforts to bring about change in media representation. Gina Davis spends lots of time consulting directors. Gina Davis remains deeply committed to her work at the Institute, continually gathering data on gender disparities in media representation. Despite widespread interest in the issue, she prefers to focus her efforts behind the scenes rather than promoting her research publicly. We go meet with every studio, every guild, every network, every production company and share it with them privately, Davis explained in an interview with Interview Magazine. I don't really bust anybody publicly. It's much more efficient if I can impact the creators. In another interview with Glamour, Davis clarified that her primary goal with the Institute isn't about raising public awareness. I give speeches and interviews and we release data to the public, she said. 
but the main goal is not to educate the populace. She believes that real change in the entertainment industry comes from influencing decision-makers directly rather than relying on public pressure. Gina Davis founded a film festival. Apart from her efforts to increase female representation in media, Gina Davis has been deeply involved in promoting diversity within Hollywood through various initiatives that consume much of her time. In 2015, Davis co-founded the Bentonville Film Festival, a non-profit event dedicated to showcasing films directed by women, people of color, and members of the LGBTQ community. Beyond just a showcase, the Bentonville Film Foundation, which Davis supports, provides year-round support to filmmakers who often face marginalization in mainstream Hollywood. Davis is driven by a desire to give talented directors opportunities they might not otherwise receive in traditional film circles. Our goal is very simple. Storytellers and people on screen should reflect the population, which is half female and incredibly diverse. Davis explained to The Guardian. It's not a far-fetched idea. It just makes total sense. Oh, we want to change the world. Through her advocacy and initiatives like the Bentonville Film Festival, Gina Davis continues to push for a more inclusive and representative media landscape, aiming to empower underrepresented voices and reshape the storytelling norms in the entertainment industry. Gina Davis was unsatisfied with her roles. Throughout her career, Gina Davis has become increasingly selective about the roles she chooses, a sentiment she shared in a 2019 interview with Vogue. Before committing to a character, Davis carefully considers how women in the audience would perceive the role. Her aim is to portray characters that are genuinely complex and intriguing, rather than settling for parts that don't resonate with her. I really want to land some good roles. With all my experience, I feel I could be better than ever. I just wish those roles would come around more often, Davis expressed to interview. I don't mind waiting two or three years for something really substantial, but waiting ten years for a great opportunity is frustrating and embarrassing. Davis is determined not to accept roles purely for financial gain. Despite the potential for long gaps between projects, she remains committed to her principles and eagerly awaits roles that align with her artistic ambitions. Age Discrimination in Hollywood Gina Davis reflected on the stark reality of ageism in Hollywood, particularly after turning 40, in a candid interview with The Guardian. I fell off the cliff. I really did, she admitted. In the early stages of her career, Davis felt optimistic seeing actresses like Meryl Streep, Jessica Lange, and Sally Field thriving in female-centric roles. However, as she aged, she noticed a dramatic decline in substantial roles available to her. Davis addressed the pervasive myth that older actresses have more opportunities today. In an interview with AARP, she dispelled this notion emphasizing that despite ongoing efforts, age discrimination remains a significant issue in the industry. Frustrated by the scarcity of roles, Davis remains resilient. Instead of considering retirement, she remains proactive, actively seeking out roles that align with her artistic aspirations. Mediocre reviews for Ava. Gina Davis has indeed persisted in her acting career but recent projects have faced challenges. In 2020, Davis took on the supporting role of Bobby in the crime drama Ava. The film revolves around Ava, a skilled assassin employed by a black ops organization, tasked with eliminating high-profile targets worldwide. However, when a mission goes awry, Ava finds herself targeted and must navigate treacherous circumstances to survive. Despite its action-packed premise, Ava received lukewarm reception from both critics and audiences alike. John Serba from Decider criticized the film, describing it as a formulaic action thriller lacking originality. He wrote, Ava is a violent, boilerplate, borny thriller without a single original bone in its body. File under waste of talent. 
The film's release during the COVID-19 pandemic further dampened its impact, possibly leading to reduced visibility even among Davis's fans. Beyond Ava, Davis's career trajectory underscores the challenges older actresses face in Hollywood, particularly in finding roles that resonate and showcase their talents. Gina Davis has been working as a producer. Gina Davis has actively pursued opportunities to influence Hollywood behind the scenes, leveraging her influence to champion gender equality and diversity in media. While she hasn't stepped into the director's chair for a feature film, Davis has made significant strides in various roles off-screen. Her efforts span from consulting with filmmakers to advocating for stronger female roles in scripts to actively producing projects that amplify underrepresented voices. One notable project where Davis showcased her commitment to change was as an executive producer for the 2018 documentary This Changes Everything. The film delves deep into the pervasive gender biases within the entertainment industry, featuring Davis herself sharing personal anecdotes and insights gained from her career. Her involvement underscores her proactive stance in addressing systemic issues and fostering dialogue around gender equality. Davis's role as a producer extended to the series Mission Unstoppable, which aired from 2019 to 2021. Co-produced with Miranda Cosgrove, the show highlights women pioneers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, fields through engaging interviews. Davis's dedication to empowering women in typically male-dominated professions aligns with her broader mission to reshape perceptions and opportunities in media. Media. Time for Gina Davis's comeback? Gina Davis remains actively engaged in pursuing captivating new roles and projects, showcasing her versatility both on screen and behind the scenes. Currently, she is immersed in the development of two exciting ventures set to expand her creative horizons. Firstly, Davis is involved in the comedic drama Cowgirl's Last Ride, a film that promises to blend humor with poignant storytelling. The plot centers around a spirited woman who breaks out of a care facility to journey back home, sparking a series of adventures as her son endeavors to locate her. In addition to her film commitments, Davis is venturing into the realm of reality television with the innovative series I Can by Friday. In each episode, she will immerse herself in learning challenging new skills and attempting daring stunts, showcasing her fearless spirit and determination. Given her track record of mastering athletic feats and even competing in Olympic-level archery, Davis's foray into reality TV promises exhilarating entertainment coupled with her trademark tenacity. In October 2022, Harper One published Davis's Dying of Politeness, a memoir of her journey from childhood conventional New England femininity and trauma to feminist badassery, one role at a time, on screen and in the real world. Whether captivating audiences with her on-screen performances or steering creative initiatives from behind the camera, Gina Davis continues to embody a steadfast commitment to shaping positive change in Hollywood. Her ongoing dedication to diversity, empowerment, and compelling storytelling ensures that her impact on the industry remains enduring and influential for years to come.